Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. Our Reverend Jewel Williams here with our Wednesday Word for October the 1st. Our theme is Heart Matters. What do you treasure? Our scripture is found in Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Um, and you can follow the ministry and see what's going on with, with when um, in many of our different locations. And you'll see that in our um, in the credits at the end of the video. And so I'm just moving along and we're talking for the month of October about Saul and he has a prideful heart. And this is Saul the king, not Saul who became Paul. And so I'm starting with 1 Samuel chapter 10 verses 8 through 10 and I read the NIV version. But before I read, let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to allow your word to speak to us. Now, Lord, we pray that nothing would hinder us from hearing that you would unstop our ears and let us hear what the spirit is speaking to us. God, we ask that you would help us to grow from it, learn so that we can have the right kind of heart and we can tre treasure those things that are pleasing to you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Starting at verse eight, it says, go down ahead of me to Gilgal. I will surely come down to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, but you must wait seven days until I come to you and tell you what you are to do. As Saul turned to leave, Samuel, God changed Saul's heart, and all these signs were fulfilled that day. When he and his servants arrived at Gibbeth, a procession of prophets met him. The Spirit of God came powerfully upon him, and he joined in their prophesying. Now, I'm going to read verse 9 of the same scripture, but it's from the New Living Translation. And it says, as Saul turned and started to leave, God gave him a new heart and all Samuel's signs were fulfilled that day. And I just wanted you to hear that new heart part. So let me just give you a little bit of background. We're here because the people have requested a king. They um, don't, you know, they don't like how things are going. They don't like the treatment. They're looking for things to be different. Um, they are talking about how Samuel, his sons were not like him. They were just, so they wanted a king. Now, Samuel wasn't pleased with this, but um, this is this, this is verse, first Samuel verse eight, chapter eight, verse four through five talks about this conversation. And it says, finally, all the elders of Israel met at Ramah to discuss the matter with Samuel. Look, they told him, you are now old and your sons are not like you. Give us a king to judge us like all the other nations have. And so this is this is the, the request they, they put to Samuel. And again, as I said, he, you know, God tells him, don't take it like they're rejecting you because they're rejecting me. And so who is the choice? Who will be this king? Well, Saul's, let's look at Saul's background. Um, in 1 Samuel, verse, I mean, chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, it says, there was a wealthy, influential man named Kish from the tribe of Benjamin. He was a son of Abiel, son of Zerah, son of Bacharath, son of Aphia, of the tribe of Benjamin. His son Saul was the most handsome man in Israel, head and shoulders taller than anyone else in the land. Now, we often say um, that people chose Saul, but that God chose David. But the truth is, you know, the people wanted a king, but it really is God that chose the king. Because we often, and I've done it myself, we've often listened or read that piece of scripture, and it just talks about Saul's background. And we think, well, they chose him because he's a wealthy person. It talks about how handsome he is, and he's head and shoulder taller than anyone else in, in the land. So we just automatically assume, oh, well, he was an obvious choice because he was the tallest, he was the best looking, and that's why he was chosen. As though to say, he really kind of was set up for failure. But really, in going over this lesson, I realized he was not set up for failure. He really was set up by God for success. He just chose differently. Now, how can I say that? Let's read. I'm going to read for you 1 Samuel chapter 9, verses 15 and 16. And it says, Now the Lord had told Samuel the previous day, About this time tomorrow I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him to be the leader of my people, Israel. He will rescue them from the from the Philistines, for I have looked down on my people in mercy and have heard their cry. And so, again, I just want to give you that little bit of background. So here we have Saul. He wasn't just an obvious choice. Now, later on, the people do pick him, but he had already been anointed before the people picked him. So I just want us to understand that he really had God's anointing on him to do so. So let's look quickly at some points. The first point that I want to do is talk about is God changes Saul's heart. He gives him a heart to understand God's purpose for him. And we see that in verse 9 because it was saying, you know, the scriptures before that um, 
Samuel had given him a, the instruction on what to do. He told him specifically some things that were going to happen. He told him, I'm coming in seven days, but but you wait until I get there. Um, but, you know, so he had given him these instructions on what to do and, and how to do them. But it says that God changed Saul's heart. And so he was willing because his heart was changed and softened and unbelief was removed. Maybe fear was moved. Whatever was standing in the way in his heart was removed so that all of the signs, all of the things that Samuel spoke in him could happen. And it's really the truth for you and I. It's not until we allow God to change our hearts and, and remove whatever's in the way, whether it's fear, doubt, mistrust, whatever is in your heart that has to be changed. When God changes it, then it gives us a place of freedom where then we can believe and trust that the things of God will be fulfilled in our lives. The second point is God's spirit comes powerfully upon those he has chosen. And we also see that now in verse 10, now we only see this one time in scripture in, ter in terms of him prophesying, but there are other times in scripture where it talks about the spirit of God came powerfully upon him. And, and, and really, I think that's key is that God's spirit is what allows you and I to be able to accomplish the things in our lives that he wants us to accomplish. And it's the same for Saul and anybody else that you read in scripture. And so God, when we, when we have a heart for him, when we're turning and listening and obedient to him, then his spirit will move within us powerfully so that we can do the things that God has required for us to do. And the third point is God's spirit can allow you to do even what you were not able to do before. And that brings me back to the point where, you know, God's power came on him and powerfully, in a, and then it says he joined in in their prophesying. And if you read the scriptures around that, it's, it's they go, well, wait a minute, isn't that Saul over there prophesying? In other words, who is he that he's prophesying? He's not a prophet. But see, God, when his spirit moves in you and I, even things that may not be our gifts, talents, or abilities, God has the freedom to use us in any way that he desires. Um, you may not have, per se, the gift of healing, but God can speak healing through you when you allow him to have access to your heart, when you have willing to allow him to have access to your life. And that's really what is important um, to, to any of us being able to do the things that God wants to do in our lives. Now, what's the life point that, that I want to bring from this scripture? God has a purpose for every life. And we must remember to stay as humble throughout the journey as we were when we began the journey. Because here we see Saul, um, he, he's listening to the prophet. Um, he's doing for the fact that he's prophesying all these other things is because he was obedient. He trusted the man of God. He was obedient to the man of God. And so now he's doing what he was told to do. And you and I must remember whether it's the prophet or not, but the prophet in this sense really just representing the spirit of God because the prophet didn't speak for himself. He spoke for God. So when you and I are willing to listen to the things of God, when we're willing to be obedient to the things of God, when we're willing to move as God tells us to do, then we can see God's power be mighty in our lives. And we can see uh, that God will will be faithful to help us. But we have to remember, we can never get cocky. We can never forget how we started the journey because we'll, as we go on this um, month, we'll see that that's what happened. Saul kind of forgot who gave him, who put him in the place. Um, and, and, and in doing so, his his heart became prideful, but in the sense, his heart became prideful. But I'm going to show you during this month that sometimes fear underneath can actually exhibit itself in a prideful way. So again, the life lesson is we want, um, God has a purpose for every life. And we have to remember to stay humble in the journey um, as we begin, just as we did in the beginning of our walk. So let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this word. And we ask that you would help us to begin to apply it to our lives. Help us, Lord, to see that you have a purpose for us and we want to be obedient to you. We want to do the things that you want us to do. And in doing so, we know that your power and anointing will flow through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.